So, hello, my name is Gergely, and um, I'm surprised that I have to look in the slides as well because there's no screen in front of me, but I will manage. So, um, it's a long title, <laughs> but only the first line is actually really uh, important here. Show me what you can do in Moodle. This is a sentence I don't know how hundred or thousand times I've said in my Moodle life. I'm working with Moodle for almost, I would say, 15 years as a student assistant, and moving on as, as being the e-learning expert at my university. And at one point, we came to the decision we need something that we can point the teachers to um, and create something which help us answering this, show me what you can do in Moodle. And so, my background, Theo Wien, Vienna, Austria, I'm head of the service uh, unit, Digital Teaching and Learning. And with my team, we support the teachers, so we sell them Moodle, and we have to advertise it. And Moodle is, of course, our main tool, but we are also involved in other e-learning uh, topics. And we, in our team, we live, love, uh, love Moodle. I guess you here as well, you love Moodle. But some of the teachers has to be convinced. There is only a few people who come to us and say, okay, show me, please, <laughs> and what can I do there? But the majority is we have to reach out to them. And um, basically, this is my job with my team. And what we have heard in the last couple of years, not once, but many times, uh, Moodle is for uploading PDFs only because this is what they have seen at other courses, or uh, Moodle has only a forum because it was empty. <laughs> Or uh, I have no idea what all these Moodle elements uh, are for, like IMS contents, CORM, external tool, etc. So we had to explain it all the time, and it was a repetitive task. And some teachers even said, "Okay, I looked at Moodle, but after a couple of minutes, I did not really see the well the, uh, the added value. So we have to find a solution there." And we need to link in my team to didactics, examples, use cases, and this demo character. We needed some demo cases, some showcases for them that they can grasp on. And our goal was not just helping the teachers, but also support our daily work. Um, yeah, the most uh, coolest feature of Moodle we had to show, um, again, we have to be a salesperson, advertise. <laughs> this was really a task and this is, still is. And it has to be useful, something practical that they really can use in their courses right on. And yeah, the last point is actually um, even more important. I should do a separate slide for that. Um, it should really represent Moodle, awaken realistic expectations. This is really important because there are so many beautiful courses that were built in, I don't know how many hundreds of hours, but this is um, the top. And I want to awaken realistic expectations for the teachers. This is our goal. So what we came up, um, our solution, Tuvel is our Moodle. It's just Theovin uh, e-learning. And that scenario says uh, use cases. So this is the name of the course. And we wanted to create here an area where teachers can put a glass on and see a course with the student's perspective. Sometimes they see it for the first time as well. And this is a key. And they can see all question types. They're all H5P examples or activities and resources, etc. But I will show it to you later. So this is the basic idea, creating something to them that they can have a look at it and get a little bit inspired in a realistic way. <laughs> this is uh, important for me or for us. Actually, it's a, quite a simple setup that we have here. One course with self-enrollment without a password because they had to uh, log in first. Um, we have hidden the participants list, optimized a little bit the notifications of this specific course, and forced the language because it's in German only currently. Um, but that's it. So it's a um, basic, simple course that we use now. And this is the, um, how should I say, I have no, uh, do I have a pointer? Uh, no, this is just for going back and forth. Um, but actually, I can come here and show it as well. Oh, okay. Um, this description here in four lines is the main uh, description for each item. So we have, it has to be really pointed. It, it's not, it should not be really long. Long descriptions are not read. And this is, for example, our advertising the book, for example. So it says book. The second line is where we shortly, really shortly uh, describe the feature. In this case, like many pages of a document, 
with a table of content. And the second line is uh, the use scenario, the most common use scenario, like digital script or a central lexica is what's here in German. And then that's it. And then they have the link to the actual book item in Moodle. And uh, we have all of the activities and resources in the same way on a Moodle page. And yeah, probably you are asking the question how it look like this course. Um, it is Moodle, it's looking nice, but not as cute as this puppy to be honest. Um, I've created some screenshots. I was told I'm not allowed to change to a web page um, and show it uh, live. So I've prepared them some screenshots here. The first one is for example, um, and this is the most heavily requested question over the years. Teachers wanted to know how, for example, a quiz works and how each uh, question types really look like. So what we did here in this course is, again, with, like here, uh, we have a short description of the quiz, not long, and after they click on the activity themselves, they're, for example, here, start the quiz and can see it really as a student perspective. And they have all the question types. There is one single example for it, like here, this uh, drag and drop on an image, or a true false question, multiple choice question, etc. So they can really experience it on a, a student perspective. Also, we want to advertise H5P for the teachers. Here, again, we have the description, and for each H5P, we have um, an example there that they can really feel and experience it. This is important. Like here, a little screenshot to the right, the image, I hope it, I pronounce it well, just the position where you can slide uh, among um, two images. And very often teachers say, okay, cool. Now I see what your point is and I can try it out. And then later on questions arise and then we can handle it. But we have this first sparkle that we could really uh, use. For example, this COM package, <laughs> it's a term teachers and all assistants, professors could not really um, imagine what's behind it. Yeah, And uh, so they go, did go through the interactivity chooser in the items, COM package, I don't know, okay, go on, move on. But it's actually, you all know, it's quite a useful tool in Moodle that you can, for example, with Articulate, Adobe Captivate, or other authoring tools, you can create learning experiences. So what we did here is, for example, using one of the packages that they already know, because this is sometimes mandatory at my university for in the onboarding process that they learn about inclusion, for example, or microaggressions, etc. So it has a a couple of uh, topics, and we have chosen this core package and also provided within this course. And then, okay, they saw, oh, this is something that can also be used in Moodle, and from down, that point on, could support them and help if they wanted to have sort of these uh, learned packages and user scenarios. Yeah, and what we also do is, um, sometimes, of course, more information is necessary. Um, because these two, three lines, what I've shown you, it's sometimes a little bit too short. Um, but when they are accessing, for example, a book, then on the same, um, on the first page in the description, we provide in a rec recognizable way um, additional information in such a um, box in a black bracket. It's not beautiful. This is uh, something that I would like to improve in the future, where now we can a little bit give them hints, tricks, describe a little bit longer what's the topic, because now in the first place they have already clicked on it. Um, they are inside, for example, the glossary, and then we can sometimes describe them as scenarios, the most com common one. Yeah, and also we use this course as um, advertising uh, LTI integrations. So not just the Moodle elements themselves, but for example, our le lecture recording tool, OpenCast, that's called in our university lecture tube. And here we have uh, three use cases that we have prepared for them. The first line, lecture tube live is a live streaming. That means if they click on it, they can watch a live stream um, of one of the lecture halls in our university. We support 40. But here they have, again, the student perception. They see, okay, how a live streaming can be watched within Moodle. So this is a great value for them. The second line is lecture tube video, so a single video they can click on and watch. I think it's on uh, thermodynamics, uh, the basics of thermodynamics. <laughs> and 
if they want, for example, also experience the Netflix uh, character uh, having a series of, of multiple episodes, then they can also see it within the Moodle course and then watch many videos. And so again, this course is a sort of an advertisement platform for us. And if you have questions from teachers, okay, I'm thinking about using lecture recording. How does it look like in Moodle? We point them to this course and they can experience it firsthand. Yeah, and I've told you, okay, we try uh, to use the most common use case. Um, and it's sometimes a little bit artificial. <laughs> uh, we have to create the scenario that they can see the point, the use of the, um, this certain plugin. For example, Moodle Overflow is a third party plugin, like Stack uh, Overflow, where you can raise questions, you can get answers, and then upvote uh, or even mark answers as solution or as helpful. And here, for example, we have created a couple of uh, communication, uh, some, some postings with answer, answers and so on. Um, yeah, but it's sometimes a little bit artificial. So there, here we come to the limit uh, of these um, showcases. Yeah. Again, very often teachers ask us, okay, we want to have a sort of a, a booking a scheduler system in Moodle where they can create slots for oral exams, for example. Uh, how does it work? And then we can say, okay, go to this demo course. You see, for example, within our own development, it's the organizer. Um, they, we have provided a couple of slots. They can book it. They see, for example, okay, sometimes the teacher is available, sometimes not. Some slots are full. So they can, again, experience it on first hand. Yeah, and we try to add, if it's possible, also other features with into this, this course, like um, third party plugins that are not in this mod folder. For example, from Tim Hunt, the embedded question um, that you can use in, for example, a tiny MC editor um, within a book. Um, you can embed questions. Um, this is quite useful for many of them. And then again, we can point them to a book on this page. You can have an experience how a question, an embedded question is looking like. Or for example, the download center. Very often teachers ask us, okay, what can the students download from a course? Uh, there is a Moodle solution as well, but our plugin is, I think, more than one decade old, and we are maintaining it. So the download center is for students. They can download everything for the course where they have actually view rights. And then we say to the teacher, okay, go to this course, download everything from the course, and you can see what's actually included. And then they have a better feeling um, um, how it's working. Yeah. And the checkmark report, again, the checkmark is an assert part plugin that we have developed mostly for mathematics exercises where, for example, students have to uh, solve five examples and they check which of them they can solve. For example, number one, number two, three is okay. Nah, exercise number four is too difficult. I don't check it. And five, again, is something I can solve. And so the teachers see, okay, what uh, they have prepared for the exercise. And sometimes teachers ask us, okay, what, because they have multiple instances of a check mark in a course, how do students see this? And actually they can now go to this um, demo course of ours and check it themselves and with the student glasses and view. Yeah, and the question is, are we happy with this uh, solution? Um, we have it almost for six and a half years. We have 1,053 users enrolled in this course, so it's quite okay, I would say. And roughly we have 100 uh, visits per three weeks. So this is roughly the usage. It's okay during semester, of course. When we have uh, holidays, um, the course is not that active. And so basically, yes, we are happy with it, and we will continue definitely because it's, especially for us, uh, really useful. Um, we can also here monitor a little bit the usage uh, with a heat map a plugin that we have on hand that we see, okay, those teachers who are interested, uh, when are they active? And then here we can uh, filter it and can have a look at and we see, okay, Tuesday and Wednesday are the um, dates where they are most active, actively in this course. Why Sunday uh, 11 p.m. is Dark blue, I don't see, uh, understand currently. I have to check it, to be honest. <laughs> um, but this also helps us a little bit to 
uh, find solutions when we should, for example, advertise them and send them emails or um, notifications for new update releases, etc. So this is also handy uh, for us. And the biggest, biggest gains for my team um, supporting teachers and academics is that we can use these elements in many different other guides, not just in our guides that we develop and create for the teachers, but also, for example, other departments like a didactic team, the e-assessment e team, or the WISE rectorate has also a um, handbook of teaching, for example, and they can reference good examples, for example, they can see, okay, if you want to have a look how Moodle is uh, solving our lecture recording, go here, and then they can check it. And for us, to be honest, the second point is the most important one. We get around 800, 900 tickets per year. It's not that much, but again, it's, it's okay, quite an, um, an amount to deal with. And here we often refer to um, this demo course. For example, they are asking us, okay, how does this and this function work? And they say, okay, you can try it out here and send them the link. And together with, for example, another guide where they can um, set up it themselves. So in ticketing, we heavily use uh, linking to this uh, demo course. And of course, the third part, uh, uh, point here that's listed is important for us. Uh, we use it in webinars when we have trainings on Moodle Basics, on Moodle Advanced. Then we can also point out, okay, check yourself here in this demo course. You can experience how a forum works, how um, uh, um, feedback uh, works or a choice works. And twice a year we have a Moodle update um, and then also I prepare for the teachers what's new. And very often I use uh, also this page when I can include it, for example, for we are in, on 4.4, there was a new question type, the ordering question type, so what did I do? I have created um, one uh, quiz within this uh, demo course and um, pointed them towards this and showed, okay, this is the new feature, you can experience this yourself there as well. So it's really, really handy for updates and information on updates. Yeah, this is, I think, the last uh, slide I've try to summarize and collect a little bit um, caution or problems that might arise. So the first one is, uh, of course, you have deadlines. Um, for example, um, where you have to enroll yourself until this deadline. Yeah? And you have to set these deadlines for the far, far future. I always choose April 1st in 2043 because it's the first day of my retirement. Maybe I will be on a Mexican beach and if Moodle makes kaboom, I don't really care. <laughs> or at least I have a nice uh, space. <laughs> so this is um, far future slots is, is really helpful. We want, we want absolutely sure that it's legally correct. Um, so if we use uh, resources from outside, of course, uh, we quote them. Um, if we see something interesting from a teacher, thank you, um, then um, we ask for their consent that we can use it in our course. So it's also very, very helpful for us. Um, GDPR, etc. this is obviously everything we try to fulfill within the course. We also want to try to minimize um, where they can, um, how should I say, interact or see each other. Sometimes, of course, it's not possible, like in a forum, etc. Um, so we check regularly here. It says quarterly, but sometimes it's every half a year if something happens. But to be honest, in these uh, six and a half years, all the posts were like testing, testing, and not really, um, how should I say, um, content topic uh, text. Sometimes lorem ipsum uh, text was um, entered. Yeah, after each uh, Moodle update, a sanity check is required, of course, if it's still looking good, if it still works. Um, we have to adjust the course start um, date every semester that it's in the current uh, semester of our LMS. And yeah, some elements a little bit limited. For example, I love the workshop module, the peer review, but you cannot really create a scenario where they can go through. So what we did there is providing some images, a short video, um, how it looks like, that's uh, describing them, but that's it. So some of them are really, really limited and also providing feedback or automatic feedback when they uh, upload something in assignments is also a little bit limited. 
yeah, we want to continue our work, so only time is needed. <laughs> uh, make it nicer, maybe an English version, we have the tendency that more and more English uh, requests are coming. Um, maybe some more use cases, if it's possible, and what I would love to do a section on completion scenarios that the teacher can experience this as well on first hand, like manually completing something or uh, automatically completing it. And I think that's it. I'm hopefully I'm within the time. So thank you very much that you have uh, listened and I'm here for questions and I'm here all the three days. So if you have other questions as well, just grab me and we can talk. Thank you. And of course, if the questions are here, just I think we have a couple of minutes. Hello. Um, how do you manage like quizzes, things that have complex settings? Do you get into details? Do you have recommended settings for the different tools? Yes, thank, thank you very much for the question. Yep, um, this is where we are thinking um, about the most common use case. And the most common use case is uh, um, that, for example, we set up, they start the quiz, and after submitting it, they get the full results. Uh, all others, um, some we have one quiz element there as well that's on uh, immediate feedback after each question. So there we, we have two elements there, that's an exception. Um, but this is what I was talking about. Sometimes we need a little bit to limit the scenarios because otherwise we would have six or seven quiz elements and again, it's too much, they're overwhelmed and teachers may not click on it, yeah. So this is where we are always discussing within the team to use the most common scenario and try to get the spark and if they have questions, there is always a contact address to our support team. Uh, did you happen to find if the, the teachers started to uh, use a more broader uh, instance of tools? So uh, by instead of just relying on the same old tools, were they using different tools after you delivering the, the demo? Um. Basically, um, this information I don't really have, so what they are really doing it with it. So sometimes we point them in this direction, we see that they have logged in, tested it, and then maybe found a solution. So we are a technical university, they are hard to reach, and sometimes they solve it themselves after they get this little spark. So um, getting in touch with them is not that easy, especially on, on the topics like didactics. But yeah, this would be lovely to see uh, what's happening on, but not that easy to get the information, yeah. Hello. Uh, I'm wondering, you are, uh, you are using the most, uh, you are guided by the most common scenario. So have you thought that you create template courses that cover uh, those scenarios? Would be easier. Yes, this is an excellent question. This is what we debate every half a year. Should we do it? Should we don't do it? It has so many pros and cons, and we have decided to against it because uh, we have a campus software, um, and it's currently not supporting it. But in the future, if in the campus software, you can already um, select, for example, the template courses, and from that moment on, your Moodle uh, course is created as a template that might be interesting for us, but currently with all the available uh, template plugins and solutions, I'm not quite happy. Sometimes they are too confusing because the teachers have to change things here, 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 and, and then they're a little bit losing track. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank but you. This is a very good question because it's, it's jointly together and we're discussing intensively for many years right now. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, that's the more questions? Um, one more, sorry. Um, it's regarding the heat map plugin that you showed. Is that an open source uh, plugin? Is it your own developed? Uh, I have never seen it. That's yeah. Uh, 
the heat map plugin is actually what we have seen. I think it's the learning analytics plugin of a German university. And we have taken this little part out of it and included in within a, um, a plugin of ours, but this is not um, published plugin so far. So yeah, this is just for us, yeah. Yeah. But I think it's it's a German university. I think it's learning analytics, the code, the third party plugin. So the code is in there with other great features, but we just needed the heat map solution. <laughs> okay, yeah. thank you.